Hello chemistry folks. We have here the super saturated labs. Uh, we have a solute and a solvent and we are gonna make a solution. The solute in this case is sodium acetate. That's NaC2H3O2. That's the stuff that you taste when you eat salt and vinegar chips. We also have water. Now, if you look at this, we're gonna use 15 grams of sodium acetate. We're gonna use 1.6 milliliters. Whoa, wait, 1.6 grams of water or 1.6 milliliters. Remember, it doesn't say water to one. I can call it either one. I'm gonna put them together and I'm going to have them form a solution. Let's try it out. Now, as you can see here, this solution really doesn't look like much of a solution. We've got a really small amount of water and a whole bunch of salt. This isn't dissolving. So the question you need to ask is how would you get this to dissolve and become a solution without adding more water? What would you do? Some of you recall the solubility curve. If you look over here, as the temperature goes up, I will be able to dissolve more and more solute into the water. Let's go ahead and try that out now. Now I've set up a water bath to try to heat this solution up. As it got warmer, all of the sodium acetate dissolved and we're left with a clear solution. Now as I move it over to the test tube rack, you can't see the starting temperature, but it actually started at about 80 degrees. Now we're going to let it sit there and we're going to let it slowly cool down and see what it looks like at the end. And while we slowly let that cool down, let's take a look at a solubility curve for sodium acetate. This curve is the same curve that we are dealing with. And as we talked about this curve, we started here at about room temperature. And when we put that sodium acetate in there, we saw it did not dissolve. Uh, if we said that we had 100 grams in there, we would have been right up about here. You would have more salt than you could actually dissolve. So we realized the only way we could get this salt to dissolve is we had to move this way and we had to heat things up. And so when we turned it up to on the stove, 80 degrees, we were right here we were actually underneath this line. And when you're underneath the line, you're actually unsaturated. It could hold more salt. Then as it was above or beneath that line, we let it cool down. And that's what you're watching right now. It's cooling down, it's cooling down. The salt isn't changing. There's still the same amount of salt. And as we go this way, we're gonna keep on letting it cool down until we get to right here, 35 degrees. We wanna get right here. When we get to 35 degrees, something interesting is gonna happen. It's going to be super saturated it's holding more salt than it's supposed to. That solute is not supposed to be dissolved in there. It should be down here. Okay, so we are holding more salt in there. It will be super saturated, and that's where we're gonna see what happens next. So at this stage, this solution is super saturated. It's holding more than it should. We are going to have left it cool down for 23 minutes. And at this stage, I'm going to sprinkle in some seed crystals. What I need you to do is make a prediction. As it goes from liquid to solid, when it crystallizes, what will happen to the temperature? Also take note that the starting temperature right now is at about 35 degrees. Now, as I start to sprinkle, keep an eye on the temperature and the, whoa, you see it? It's crystallizing, like legit. Look at, okay, it's moving down, down the test tube. Thermometer, up, oh, still 35, still 35, still 35. The crystals are moving towards the bottom and they've reached the bottom. Whoa, look at the thermometer. Check it out. This is real time. This part is not sped up. It is freezing and the temperature is spiking. I bet you most of you didn't see that coming. Now think about it. When you freeze, yeah, we think of ice being cold. But to freeze for that ice cube, it had to lose its heat in order to become an ice cube. This thing isn't cold at all. It feels hot. It's losing its heat in order to become a solid. And remember, this is all happening because this solution was super saturated. It was holding more solute than it was supposed to. A super saturated solution is almost like a person taking a nap when they shouldn't be. When you add that little seed crystal, it's that shock that wakes them up to realize, hey, I gotta wake up or I should crystallize. And people always wanna know, hey, did that really turn into a solid? Sure did, take a look. Thermometer's stuck in there. In fact, I've had students break them off trying to get them out. You better heat this solution back up and turn it into a super saturated solution if you'd like your thermometer back. 